this video, I'll demonstrate how to import AGS data into LeapFrog Works. AGS is a format for the digital exchange of ground investigation data specified by the Association of Geotechnical and Geoenvironmental Specialists, and is a commonly used format in some parts of the world. The ASCII formatted data comes from multiple sources of ground investigation, and thus can be point data, interval data, metadata, or a combination of all of these. AGS data is organized into projects, however, in a LeapFrogWorks project, it may be required to import from multiple AGS projects or from only a portion of the AGS project data. We'll start by looking at where in LeapFrog we can import AGS data, then show the functionality of the import wizard when importing AGS data, and finally, add additional tables from an AGS file. Here we are in a new project. In the borehole database, AGS files are a supported file format when selecting import boreholes. Both AGS versions 3.1 and 4 are supported. The AGS files are also supported for later appending or reloading of borehole data. Right click on the borehole data folder and select import boreholes. In the import borehole data window that appears, click on browse next to the caller window. Navigate to your AGS file, select it and click open. LeapFrogWorks will automatically populate the survey window as well as the intervals and screen windows if it detects those data types. If the LeapFrog wizard has correctly identified the files, click Import. Once we've selected our AGS file, the project summary information appears in the Import Caller Data window. This window displays the project identifier number as well as some of the other metadata associated with the AGS file. In the lower part of the window, the Caller Data group whole, or loca, depending on your AGS file version, is pre-selected. Pressing OK brings up the regular wizard view for identifying the columns to build the associated tables in the borehole database. As with the other types of borehole data, LeapFrogWorks attempts to pre-select the important caller information. Scroll through the columns to confirm that the columns of interest are set to be imported. A reminder, when initially importing borehole data, less is best. It's easy to add columns later, but once a column is added, it cannot be removed. When you append new data later, it will need to contain the exact same columns. In this case, I'm happy with most of the columns that have been pre-selected for import, but I would like to add the project ID column as well. The project ID can sometimes be helpful to differentiate between duplicate whole IDs occurring in various projects. Click on the project ID heading and select category. Then we can click next to move on to the survey data. The same process is followed for the survey table. The whole group, if using 3.1, or the horn group, if using version 4 AGS data, contain the survey information. Click OK. Confirm that the correct columns are highlighted for import in this table. The survey information can often be blank, so if this is true, skip is permitted and the boreholes will be brought in as vertical. If everything looks correct, click Next. The Import Interval Data window appears with the available interval data types in the lower portion of the window. In this case, we have two groups available, the Geology and the In-Situ SPT data. I will select the Geology group for importing first, and then show how to add the SPT data later. Click OK to check the columns for import. In this case, the import wizard has selected the geol underscore stat column to be imported as our lithologies. But scrolling down, I see that that column is mostly unpopulated. Click on the geol underscore geol column and select it as our lithology instead. I'm also interested in the geol underscore leg column, so I'll import it as a category. The geol underscore stat column doesn't seem to be very useful to me at this time, so I'll change my import preference here to not import it. Click finish to exit the import wizard. LeapFrogWorks will import our data and then you'll see the caller, survey, and interval data tables listed under boreholes in the borehole data folder. You'll notice that these tables have small red X's over them. This is to notify you that there are data validation errors. To learn about how to fix errors in your boreholes data, take a look at the validation and errors section of the online training. We'll leave the errors for now and drag the geology table into the scene to take a look. I have a number of boreholes with various lithologies. This looks as expected, so we can go ahead and add the other interval data. Right click on boreholes, scroll down to import from file, and select interval values. Select your AGS file, then click open. The import interval data window will pop up, and this time we'll select 
ISPT. Click OK. Check that the columns selected are correct. Change the NVAL column to be imported as numeric and click Finish. Add the SPT data to the scene to take a look. 